actually, this is supposed to be my fifth visit to River State. I was about to be my, my last. I was supposed to be visiting Bukma and Ogun today. Unfortunately, I won't be able to do it because I haven't been campaigning for the past nine months. I've lost my voice. And it's becoming this. So I'm actually apologizing and appealing to the people of these two areas for their understanding. But for me, Niger Delta, River State in particular, is very important to me. I do what I intend to do because I believe that our country has been unfair to Niger State as a whole and some states like River State where had if I give you the history of this place, properties here used to earn more rent than properties anywhere in Nigeria. And I want to bring it back. Uh, 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 my name is Robin Sengela. I work with NCA. Uh, my own concern is that uh, River State is more than likely to have to run in And one thing that is very paramount to the government of Delta is this issue of the resource control that you say. Um, when you become the president of the first are you going to look for that direction or are you already? I've, I've said it, that we will restructure the country, make it to be more fair, more compassionate to the people who have suffered a lot like the people of Niger Delta. It is critical. Nigeria has been unfair to Niger Delta in terms of, look at it, the whole place. The most important road to Niger Delta people is East West Road. That road has been completed for several years now, despite their contribution what we are sharing. I believe that even if it's one week revenue from oil, we can complete that road. If it's by borrowing, we borrowed 50 trillion in the past few years. If I devoted 1% of it, 500 billion to that road, it would have been completed. So if you look at it everywhere, Today, the environment is devastated, as I wanted to go to Ogoni. The environment is devastated, so they didn't benefit from the wealth coming from the oil money Nigeria is sharing as much as it should. At the same time, the environment is devastated. We need to do more in order to be able to clean up the environment so they can have other lives, agriculture, fishing, and so on. Okay, sir. Recently, the governor of River State, everybody knows that he's uh, in opposition to the stone and the of and there have been speculations about where he will swing. And what pillars coming from his cow show that he may be more favorable to the campaign of your adversary, your political adversary, as opposed to you. Well, you know, ordinary these are things I don't make comments. Wicked remains a brother and a friend. And when you have a brother and a friend, they have their choices. You can't question their choices. You can't question people's reason for their political reason because there might be reasons that I you don't know. But I remain the best choice for the people of Niger Delta. I'm committed to Niger Delta. I'm committed to rebuilding River State. I know what this place used to be. I grew up, my father had a business in this town. So I know what this place used to be. And I know what I can do to change the Niger Delta. And I will do it. And I'm committed to it. I'm committed to everything Niger Delta 
Remember, when someone from Niger Delta was campaigning to be president, the greatest support he got was from the Southeast. And I was instrumental to have that. I was the chairman of Southeast Governors Forum. Nobody can claim more support to Jonathan than me. And it's because of all this. So for me, Niger Delta will celebrate me if I have the opportunity. So how do you plan to end the uh, oil, oil, uh, illegal oil refining in the area? And how was the plan for the use of the Niger Delta? I've said it. We have to work for them to benefit. We intend to put them out of poverty by ensuring that A, their training, education, ensuring that we support them to support small businesses, support them to be involved by employment. There's so many things we can do for them. Nigeria is supposed to be an exemplary place based on their contribution to the wealth of this nation. I want to put those questions in now. Um, just like what you asked, are you comfortable with the, the policy plan of the federal government in terms of artisanal uh, uh, refinery, uh, artisanal refinery, um, especially popular refinery that uh, they plan for the needs? Are you comfortable with knowing fully well that that plan does not really have much effect on the needs? No, number two, do you have a plan for women? Before the Pistol of Activity Action was very pronounced, what did the previous government before it? Would your government come up with such Let me tell you, I'm not going to deal with pronouncement. One of the laws I'm going to take the National Assembly and pursue aggressively until it's passed is 40% affirmative action to be made a law for women to occupy all the various 40% of all the various positions, not just in politics, not just in, in the political field or government jobs, but also in boss of corporations or voted companies. I send in applies to youth. Then it applies to youth. As you know, this is the first time a party chairman in Nigeria, a presidential candidate in Nigeria, and a vice presidential candidate in Nigeria are people born after independence. Three of us are born after 96. It's never happened in Nigeria before. So for us, the youth and women should impress us. Because we are still solving that problem, which has become impossible. Women have tried separately for affirmative act. It's been thrown away. Nobody can support it than us now who are within that bracket. We have so many women who are competent there and more qualified than men. I can tell you that I work with women very and above all that let's go out. Out of school children all over the Nigeria will be dealt with aggressively. There's no reason why Nigeria youth should not be in school. We have universal free education. It must work. And I'll see that it work. The more educated you are, the better your development. Nigeria human capital development today is poor. 168 over 170 something. We cannot continue that way. We need to deal with it aggressively. Remember, we're going to focus on dealing with issues of proper development, which is Human Development Index, which again is three things. Health, which we are lagging today, and proper health have collapsed. 
education. With the human capital, it's collapsed. In fact, the difference between rich and poor nation is this two. The third is per capita, which is pulling people out of poverty. We're going to focus on it. That year, I have planned the way we can change the country and build it on proper development trajectory. That will be clear, which is why I'm saying what I'm going to do in Niger Delta. You'll be clear, you'll be measurable, people will see it. You'll be visible. Okay, okay. Uh, your message so far uh, in Nigeria from consumption to production and putting the part of the people that you are seeing now has resonated a lot with a lot of Nigerians. But there are still so many Nigerians who are still on the fence uh, who support your mandate with just word of mouth. They have their PPP. But they are not sure they are going to come out to vote. So I want you to just take an opportunity to speak to such persons. I'm appealing to every Nigerian. This election is an existential election for Nigeria. It is critical, it is important. It is about the future of this country. So I'm appealing to everybody to come out and vote, especially women. When I say so, women suffer the brunt of bad governance because they are mothers. They care for their children. They care for their mother, for their husbands. So they need to come out, support this, because we're trying to safeguard and build a better future for their children. We are appealing to the youths. This is the opportunity. They have got a law not too young to run. But nobody is giving them the space. I grew up hearing we are future leaders. Until now, 62 years after, we are still future leaders. I don't know when it would have happened if we didn't come out now. Because people who are in their 80s, they're still occupying the place. It isn't so. This is an opportunity of youth to embrace what we're doing. What we're promising them is clear, it's documented. When I say we're going to pull the country from consumption to production, it's very easy. And it's very measurable. Your total export for 2021 is 18.9 trillion. That at 650 is less than 30 billion dollars for a country of 200 million people living on 900 and 3,000 square kilometers of land. Arable land. Where 60% is uncultivated. Compare that with Vietnam. There are 100 million people, so they're half of our population. They live on 331,000 square kilometers, so they live on a third of our land. Their export in the same year is over $350 billion. We could not do 8-9% of what they did in the same year. And the half of our population, one third of our land, and 90% of their exports are on for job goods. In fact, they did more in footwear, the shoes, than we did in oil. And I have 60,000 shoemakers in Abba. And I have 13 minutes drive to the sea here, to the ocean, where they can do their sport. Can you believe it? They are sported clothing, 32 billion, twice what we did in oil. And we have tellers all over the place. Actually. I can go on and on, show you other countries. What we are doing, is always studied, compared countries after countries. 
We are not just promising. This election is, remember what I said, existential election. It's election to take back Nigeria and put it on a trajectory. John, it's an election, it's a generational change election. Because you have for the first time people born after independence taking over. I recall being in America when Clinton was coming. And I said, this is the first time somebody born after the Second World War. And it changed. We want to change the society. All right, sir. Not just so good, the entire Nigeria. Yes. Um, uh, we know that um, there is the NDC and there is also high which has been set up to do this. Um, are you of the opinion that this, what, what's your assessment of this agency? I don't want to assess yesterday. I don't want to assess yesterday. Yesterday is gone. Those who think about yesterday and today will miss tomorrow. If it was working, you would have felt it. You would have seen it. I don't worry about that. For example, if I have to look at yesterday, Nigerian unemployment in 2012. about yesterday and what is happening. If I want to look at yesterday, in 2012, Nigerians living in absolute poverty is 65 million. Today they are 95. Similar position is with those who live in multidimensional poverty. They've all Increased tremendously. In 2012, our unemployment rate is 10%. Today, it's nearly 35. In 2012, our debt is about 10 trillion. Today, it's 77 trillion. So, there's quite a lot. My position is not to start comparing what happened yesterday, but to start reversing it. So Nigerians can look and say, oh, after one year, two years, the unemployment have come down from maybe, say, 35 to 30 or 25, whatever I see. Because look at it and say, oh, number of absolute poverty I move from 95 to this. We want to do what is visible, measurable, people can feel it. As I always said, it will be demand driven. People can feel it. That's what we're not doing here. So people just come and promise something. If we're doing it, some people will be campaigning today. Considering where we were and where they brought us to. And they are still telling us they will continue in that direction. And people are clapping. Please, can you take a break so you just get to see? Mm -hmm. Can you contribute with this? Um, what plans do you have for the design in such a way that the youth in the Nigeria that will have the target um, stakeholders of the policy will be involved in it? Then, secondly, the back of the that is the amnesty program that is on there. Uh, would you leave it? As a program where the point of school are collecting money at the end of the Two things, it's very clear. One is that subsidy must go. Because presently it's organized crime, but it's not sustainable. We need the resources to invest in clear development areas. That's one. Two, on the issue of refineries, 
we're going to ensure that we support those who are investing in refineries, especially modern refineries, in such a way that they will help us to stop fuel importation to save us gas for an exchange. I'll be able to create a job locally. In that the world, we're going to use it to benefit the use of Nigeria. It is a business. We are going to encourage them to go into various businesses. On what you said about that, we cannot continue to just pay people without teaching them skills and encouraging them to go into proper productive ventures to be more entrepreneur. That's what we benefit them. Because all you will be there forever is an intimation asset. You must teach them a better way. That we're going to do. And I'll show you, you'll see it. Issues to do with election, PVC collection, order and all that. Everybody's worried. What we are saying is can we do things properly? Can we do it better? Essentially, now that we're going to huge difficulties. For me, it's worse. But I'm not the time. On the issue of Labour Party, I might have a structure or no structure. I might say it several times. My structure is you. My number one structure is God. My number one two structure is you. They're talking about you. Those structures which they claim they have is structure that brought us insecurity. Is structure that brought us being capital of poverty in the world is such a tremendous country with the highest number of out of school children. It's structure that have made us the highest youth unemployment country. It's structure that brought about Nigeria being a country with the highest youth drug prevalence. It's structure that made us to overtake India in the first modality. It's such a, so you could see that it's a negative structure. It's actually the structure we want to remove. I put a structure that will bring growth. It's structure that made it, and people are still in a common world. So we want to remove structure of stealing and put in structure of savings. We want to remove structure of of destroying as that beauty. We want to bring a structure that will start educating our people, start teaching them skill, start developing our country. That's the structure we want to bring. And as a proof of that, that he is not a corrupt person, I have covered this thing for eight years, and I have challenged you journalists, everybody, go and show me where their money is missing. I was there for eight years, and left, never owned pension to 
civil servants. They were on gratuity. Whatever was being owed, before I came, I cleared it. That something be there. Never own salary. Never own any supplier or contractor that have executed this job the day I was living. And I left in three banks in Nigeria. I sent Bank of Nigeria $50 million, over $10 billion. Fidelity Bank, $50 million, over $10 billion. Diamond Bank, $50 million, over $10 billion. I refuse to sign a law for my own gratuity, passion, everything. This is ninth year I left as governor of the United States. They have not bought me a bottle of water. Because I said, you cannot have a huge pension in eight years when we are only those who have been there for 35 years. This election is about character, competence, commitment, capacity, and compassion. We need to have a government that cares for the people. We have millions of youth who don't know where the next meal will come from. And people are still in public money. of design. For me, I support it. It has a long-term economic implication that will be positive for the country. India did it. And look at the impact. It comes with initial problems, but we would have done it better. We are targeted, making sure that we have enough for depositors, low depositors, on banks, and micro small businesses. Those who are keen and those who just need 10,000, 20,000. But the policy was targeting those with billions. So it should be targeted those with billions, even when people say it's for election. I said, okay, they don't do election with 10,000. They don't do election with 20,000. So we should have taken care of those who are small depositors, those who are unbanked, those who are in small businesses, like the Mama put food seller, those who say grandmas, this we should have had sufficient supply for them. And then that's the odd for that government to deal with on the issue of first cases. Nigeria has nothing to do with that. It shows what I'm saying. I don't want to be trapped in the past. How do we do it? The job of a leader is not to be complaining or finding excuses, is to be solving problems and explain to people why things are not happening. happening. And I'm committed to on outcome of the election, I don't really have any fear. My fear is that God, who brought us this far, should help us to start the ritual of time around this country.